So, good evening, parents, guardians, principal, Mr. Olness, colleagues, invited guests, Ms. Linda Campbell, person, good evening to you all. Welcome to our meeting, our grade six pet meeting. So I'm encouraging all of you, everyone, to listen and participate as much as is possible. I'm reminding everyone to observe all online protocols. Thank you very much. Without further ado, we'll invite Mrs. Smith-Hines, teacher, to lead us into the devotional exercise. Good afternoon, everyone, or good evening, I may say, um, to my colleagues, principal, everyone, just everyone. Good afternoon. Hope everyone is doing well. Good afternoon. All right. So my students wanted to help me with devotion. So um, I'm going to ask Nasifo, but she will need to share, Miss. So um, to give us permission to share. All right, now see if I'm not hearing it. So if you're having problems, I'll share. Okay, Nasifa, thank you. You're welcome, Miss and Excel staff members. And parents. All right, so now I'm going to ask Abian 
daily, she'll, she'll um, say the scripture reading for today. Good evening, staff members, parents, principal, and others. Today's scripture reading is taken from Romans 12, verse 12. Be joyful in hope, patient, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. I'm finished, Miss. Amen. Thank you, Abian. Then we're going to have Chelsea Sewell doing our prayer, and I will then leave you with a thought. Go ahead, Chelsea. Good evening, staff members, teachers, and parents. Dear Lord, I come to you today to thank you for, for waking all of us up this morning. I thank you for getting all of us through this day. I ask that you get that you get us through and give, bring to us a, a very academic 2021. And I ask that you help the parents to make the right choice of the schools for the students. I ask that you help the students to study and read over their work so we can do well in all our exams, dear Lord. I ask that you just protect us during this pandemic and you continue to do what you are doing for us and provide for us. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. 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 Thank you. So the thought for today, I know that everything is happening and we're looking on what's happening around us, but sometimes we have to reflect on the problem. If, if it's this problem for this year or so forth, or the last problem for last year. So the thought that my students and I chose is the measure of success is not whether you have a tough problem to deal with, but whether it's the same problem you had last year. And that's from John Foster Dulles. Thank you and have a great day, parents, teachers, and principal. And students. Thank you, Miss. I turn over to Mrs. Brady Jackson. Thank you very much, Mrs. Smith Hines. You're and welcome. Kelsey and Avion, two of our stars, shining stars. We thank you very much for participating in our session this evening. Thank you so much. I like the thought I'm seeing on our screen earlier, for those who were on earlier. Shoot for the stars. But if you happen to miss, shoot for the moon instead. And that's what our students were encouraging our students to do. All right, thank you very much, Mrs. Smith Hines. Without moving into I just a little warm up, you know, to just loosen up everybody. And I ask no other than Ms. Stevens to just take us to a little icebreaker just break the moment because I know parents are a little bit tense right now. No need to be because Miss Johnson started off with Merry Christmas so soon. COVID is happening, it's real. Christmas is coming, okay? So let us cheer up. Stevens, are you ready for us? Yes, I am. Thank you very much, Miss. Everyone, all protocols observed. Uh, so today we'll be breaking some ice at this time. Uh, permission to to share screen, please. So we'll be doing this icebreaker in the form of a game. I hope that's how the parents will participate. So here, present, here I'm presenting a game. It's a type of Jeopardy, right? So I have a total of 25 questions, but we're only gonna be doing five because we have five grade six classes and I want a representative of each class so just one representative when you select I want you to select from a category and the number of points so that will direct to me um, the question that we'll like to choose or the riddle that we'll be going through no um, so because I want only one participant from each class therefore when you select the question when you send in your selection I want you to send the class name so if it's six Brady Jackson your child is in her class then you'll just take six BJ six um, text the category and also the point 
Miss Smith Science is 6SH, Miss Hamilton is 6H, Miss Nane is 6N, and for myself, Miss Stevens, it's just 6S. Okay, so you're gonna text just one representative from each class. We'll text the category, which are the names listed above here. So it's um, some riddles, more riddles, even more riddles. Did you say riddles or, just a second, let me see this, um, or it's riddles to the fifth power. And then you'll choose the points. All right, so I'll see that coming up in the chat. And then now, when I reveal the question, I want parents to give me feedback by sending the answers in the show. So can I have a bid from um, 6BJ? Some riddles. Some riddles. What? What? What point? Are oh, you all right. Um, three hundred. So some riddles, three hundred. <laughs> so the question is, I am an odd number. Take away a letter, and I become even. What number am I? It, the answer can come from any class there is. So the parents from whichever class, you can just go ahead and answer that question. So that's the go is to that Miss Grady Jackson's class? No, whichever class. I'm just choosing person. Seven. Can the I answer is seven. All right. So let us see. So seven it is. Whoa. I have some brilliant parents here tonight, man. All right, so we'll take one from Mrs. Nain's class. Mrs. Nain class, just tell us the riddle and the number of points and that will direct me to the question. More riddles for 500, please. More riddles for 500. So the question is, the more of this, of this. there is, the less you see. What am I? The more of this smoke smoke is that the final answer anybody else want to choose another answer the more of this is the less you see what is it darkness darkness it is whoa maybe some students are helping some of these parents all right so we'll take one from 6sh that's six smith Hines. So let me hear the category and the number of points. Even more riddles, 500. So even more riddles, 500. All right. So what is made of water, but if you put it into water, it will die? Ice. 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 And ice cube it is. Whoa. All right. Now, so we'll take one from... Six Hamilton, that's six H. So can I have a category and a point that will direct me to the question, please? Six Hamilton. Okay. All right. Seeing as some of those parents are shy, we're just going to move over to six Stevens and then we'll get back to six Hamilton. So is there any parents from Six Stevens that would like to choose a question? Just tell even me the more, category. Even more riddles, 400. So even more riddles, 400. So the question is, I get my assignment at night and I always fulfill it, but when I do, I get cold. What am I? Colded, sorry. I get my assignment at night. Wow. All right. So this is how the students 
skills throughout the day preparing for preparing. Sometimes it takes them some time to, you know, decode or understand what is happening. But let's take time with them. Gradually, they'll get there. Anybody? I'm, I'm, I'm looking in the chat. I'm not seeing the answers yet. Oh, somebody from 6XSH responded. They said alarm. So let us see. Yeah, alarm. Yes, that's an alarm clock. Thank you. All right, so moving on to six Hamilton. Just a, one participant from six Hamilton. Anybody, somebody, please. All right. Just one last question we're going through. So we can just have a random volunteer from any class there is. Okay, so um, riddles to the fifth power, mm -hmm. 500. 500 it is. Please, we can have one more, please. Oh, is it the student's answer? What? All right, so what has a head and a tail but no body? A coin. A coin. A coin. A coin. I guess the next time I ask for some better riddles, you know. Yes, it's one more, Miss. That one was very easy. A coin. <laughs> That one was very easy. Next time I'll be hearing some better riddles because the students are getting them for the parents. All right, thank you for participating. It's, it's really a students helping the parents, you know me. The students help. I know Jean Pierre. Thank you yes. very much for informing me. I yes. realize, but yes. thank so you for yes. participating and helping out mommy and daddy. Thank you very much. Yes, you you're welcome. As smart as a sixth grade, right? Smart. Right, so this is the way to go, parents. And you just want to from time to time to you know, just break them because I mean, it's a hard thing. And you see? Okay, welcome to those who are just joining us. Thank you very much, Ms. Stevens. And these are some of the things parents we have to do from time to time to loosen them up, yes? A little bit here and there. And, um, and of course, yes, sometimes you can't get them as adults, but check them. So they, they, they're smart, you know, they're smart children. Don't let them fool you, they're smart. And they know when to use it, right? So um, I'm just gonna go straight into some motivational tips because Miss Stevens had already set the pace for that. So you're a bit loose up now. So I know at first, and right this time, you're all nervous because you're asked to do your online registration. And you're all nervous. Okay, to be nervous, it's okay. So, as a matter of fact, you're not alone. One thirty-two parents, students in grade six, and we have twice the amount parents, right? And we have other parents across Jamaica who are, are feeling the same way you are feeling. But it's okay. You're feeling nervous. So you're all about. We're all here this afternoon to discuss the online process of registration for your selection of schools. And I know some persons have gone ahead already, they have done it, but you're not sure as to if you've done the right thing or you're selected the right schools. And um, we're here to guide you, to walk you through. We're not, we're not gonna cut you down, no. no. We're just gonna guide you. So to help you with the selection, they have done so already, but we have time, a little time to go and edit as after we have gone through the process this afternoon, this evening. So you're yeah, we're reminded or you're asked to select schools based on your child's true potential. So you know them. We are just knowing them because we have gone what? October, November, a bit of September, October, November. So two months and maybe we'll call it three months because you are started in September, but you know them. So we have an, an idea of their potential. You have more than we have. Okay, so you're going to select schools based on the true potential, not what you think they should, but what you know that they are. So based on grade four performance, um, grade four PEP results that you have received some time ago, their first term in grade five, because we have not had any exams for first in grade five, and then what you have seen so far based on involvement and participation and what they have been doing since they have been in grade six. 
I know the online thing is, is, is a bit tedious for us, but we need to reflect on those, all right? So if you know your child is capable of earning a placement at Woolmers, select Woolmers. If you know your child is capable of um, receiving a placement at Alpha, select Alpha. Did you know your child? All right, parents? So do not, do not, I'm telling you, do not compare your child with another child. Do not. Okay? So they're all unique. They're all unique in their own way, and they learn differently. So do not compare them at this time. As a matter of fact, don't. Okay, encourage them every day, every day. You can do it. You have to encourage them. If you actually get some, gets 40 on the performance task or 40 on the test that we have done, unit, end of unit test, don't kill them. It, it looks a bit way out for, because they're preparing for pain, but don't kill them. What you need to do, parents, just encourage them. Say, okay, can you, can you, the next test, can you add 10 more? You know, just guide them along so you don't want them to bite off a big trunk and then, they are choked and they say, okay, would you say you're going to put on 20 marks? No. You can you add five. How much mark can you add to the next test? And I can give you 10 more. And you encourage them to put on the 10. So they move to 50. So by February, they might move to 70, 80. So you just, you just guide them along, encourage them along. Because this process right now, the online thing, the COVID thing, they're fearful parents. They're fearful. Believe it or not, they're fearful. You are too. Right? So, encourage them as they go along. Um, help them to achieve their goals. So, when they tell you they can't, you're going to say to them, you can. So, you're going to take those negatives and you're going to turn them into positive. But you can't have them saying, I can, and they just they mash them down. I said, but why are you not doing X, Y, Z? Why are you not doing X, Y, Z? So, just encourage them. They'll make it. There's life. When there's life, there's hope. So, we're hoping for the best for them. As it relates to like studying, I know at this time it is easy to be carried away by the distraction of the phones and, and everybody's online and sometimes they say they're doing homework and they're studying and they're involved in other things. So be a part of that. If you're working from home, be a part, just guide us, please. Not to be into the teacher's class, you know, because you're not invited to like that. But to be a part of it and you check on them. Because right now parents are checking on them while they're in class. And they, they, they have found out a lot of stuff that we don't even know. So they're in class with the devices in front of them. Yes. And this is talking and this is carrying on. And they're on another device doing other things. So be mindful. You check them from time to time. Let me see what you're doing. So with the science and the social studies at this time, nobody wants to read. Nobody wants to study. Like seriously, miss? No. They don't want to. So we are encouraging you to encourage them to read. So guess what? Parents, you're going to be a part of the reading process. So we have gone through a few topics already. And to God be the glory, we're hoping that they have retained and obtained and will be retaining what they, have, they were taught. So guide them through. Okay. We are going to look at chapter one, the first content. For example, science environment. What do you know? So you take this, this, this you go through with them. So tonight I read a, read a, chapter, uh, a paragraph. Tomorrow you read one. You ask questions. You quiz each other. Sometimes you might not be too sure what does that mean, but they, they'll correct you because if they know, they'll show it. But you know, they like to show up. So if they know it, they'll tell you. So be a part of this studying process. Okay, parents? Play a quiz with them. You see what, what Miss, Miss um, Hamilton, sorry, Miss Stevens um, did a while ago. Play some quiz with them, some games with them. Yes. And see who can win the night. Yes. And you give them a virtual pizza and ice cream and everybody have fun while they're studying. But be a part of that process. You can't say, no businessman I said you to do this, no business Jackson said to do this, men said to do hello, and what do you do? You sit back on your phones, people. I know, yeah, it's just yeah. Surreal. And you sit back on your phones and tell them to go and study. You need to be a part of it. So you need to spend less time on your phones, my dear parents, and be more involved in what is happening because they are smart and they know about the technology more than we do. So in a click of a button and they, they're off that. So you have to be guiding them. Don't bash them now because guess what? They have to find ways to just feel comfortable, ways to, to relax, ways not to be fearful. They have to allow them, but watch them and be a part of the studying process. Give them time out. Give them time out. 
break for the homework. So you did a piece of yeah, four assignment or three assignments. Okay. We're gonna work on this one now. Yes, and you give them some time. And you say, okay. I noticed you're, you're at the, 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 the screen for so long. Stop now. Give them some time. Break. Get involved in something else. So they can play the online games now with your supervision because you know everything is going on. And then you say, okay, let's go back now. So refocus. Let's go back to the work and you go with them. You can't just sit and allow them to do because they will overdo what they're not supposed to do. So you have to be there with them. Okay. So you break the study time into segments. You break the time to segments and say, okay, stop, go, stop, go. And some of them are more responsible now at this age. And they say, mommy, I can go and I want to stop now. If they tell you they don't want to stop now, allow them to. But they can't be just all stopped, you know. So you have to be, make sure you watch and supervise that. Um, they can achieve. Trust me. They can achieve. They're smart and intelligent children. They can achieve. Oh, we know that because we have been around them. So we know. So some, some of them are hiding behind the screen, of course. They don't want to talk to us. They're not interested in what is happening. But they have it, you know. To pull it out. But to God be the glory, we might be going back to the physical plant in January. Um, our principal will tell, tell you more about that later on in our meeting. Okay, so I them to reactivate what was there in grade four and five because some of them were smart in grade four and five, and at grade six, nobody wants to say anything. So, you know, the teachers are there not knowing how much they know. And you have like a set, they will talk and talk and tell you everything. And I said, nothing. And we're not saying that they don't know because they, we don't know if they know. But based on, you know, previous, you know, classes and what we have, were told, yes, they can do it. So allow them to be free, but at the same time, guide them. Okay? So you're working from home, you watch. You're not, you're, you're going out to work, check on them while you're at work. Okay, you call your phone from time to time. And, and liaise on with your, your child's teacher. Okay? So help them. To help, help, help us to help them. Because we can't be watching the chat and watching the, the participants while we're teaching. Sometimes they slip through the crack. And you only see when they're entering, they're re-entering re re the class. And you know, where did you go? And you hear everything. And this, this is a lot. It's a normal, no, it's a no normal. You don't want to talk. Something is wrong with your microphone, okay? You don't want to show your faces. Something's wrong with your video. So that is what they're using on us. And sometimes we know it's not true. Of course, we can't cast stones and say this is so because we're not sure. So we have to just work with what we get. But we want more out of them because we know they have it. Okay. What you can do also, parents, um, because COVID has slowed down the, the whole online process, um, teaching process, you know. It has slowed down, but it, it's not, it has not slowed down the fact that they can learn. So it, it takes us out of our physical space at school where we interact with them face to face. That's taking us out of that. But it cannot, and I'm telling you parents, it cannot interfere totally with the way they learn. Because if a child wants to learn, the child will learn. I've seen students who are going the extra mile. And they don't have every our privileged students at excess of the God with the glory. We are excess at excess of most of us, the majority of us, we are blessed. We might have a few with a few challenges, but trust me, we're getting there. And offers have been there. We're getting help from, from corporate um, entities. So we're getting there. So we're, we're here to help you. But we need your help as well. So they can go on YouTube. So Lisa has done a topic today and she has sent in our, our videos, YouTube videos. Watch them. Encourage them to watch them. And if you don't understand those, you can find another one relating to that topic and watch it as well. So they don't understand everything. They will not understand everything at this point because they're dying to be at school. But at the same time, we can't wait until we have to use what we have now to get where we want to go. Show interest in a child's learning. No, check the book. No, they'll tell you that Miss did not give us anything to write. Check Miss, of course, they got something to write. So check the books. Make sure they're marking them. We cannot stay where we are and mark everything. So what we can do, we'll do. But you check on what is happening. And you can ask, what, did, what, 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 what went wrong in class? What went right in class? What did you learn today? Talk with them. If you don't talk to them, they will not talk to you, you know. 
because they're not even talking to us, right? So talk with them. Okay, explain procedures and steps because your parents, you can watch YouTube read and, and get knowledge from it, get understanding. You can get any information you want. It, it's, it's available. Everything is available on of course, anything you want. So you can teach yourself to teach them. Can help us get them, get them through. Talk with them. Because sometimes they're feeling down. They're, they're, they're emotional. You just them lock away from you. Have them express how they're feeling. It's not every day that you do the small thing, you know. Every morning you have to get up and go to class. Who wants to do that? It's going to be their property to be under the sheets. So you wear them up. Because normally you would have gotten up for class. So just get up and just work with it until school is dismissed and you go home. We have our devotions, just the same appearance. And we dismiss them and they go home. They go home to home. So allow them to express themselves. So if they're not feeling too right today, you ask why. And then you can communicate stuff with your teacher. Communicate with your teacher. We are not monsters, okay? You may sound stern. That's because it's in us as teachers over the years. But we are not monsters. Talk with your teacher. But guess what, parents? Some teachers and I, as a matter of fact, you're tired, we are tired too. So on Saturdays, be mindful of your, your, your check your teachers because teachers don't want to, they don't want a little space. So if you know your teacher will allow a call or a text on Saturday, fine. If you know your teacher won't allow it, please don't disturb them. Wait until Monday morning if you can. Okay? So you know, if your teacher will take a call, talk with your teacher. Don't bash your teacher. If there's a misunderstanding, talk with your teacher. They're, 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 they're listening. They listen. Okay. So talk with the teachers. Um, relate personal stories with your child. You know, we were not all brilliant. You know, you know that, right? Some of us we started from we were late bloomers. We start late. Let your child know it's okay if you if you fail this one, but let us try not to fail the other one. But don't put them down because you can just damn just hurt by doing that. So you let them know if you started late. And if you could not do mathematics, but you have learned it, and you could not do write a composition, or you could not write an essay, but you have learned how to let them know. So then they don't feel alone. Boy, well, I'm the only one in the world who can't do this. So you share your, ex your past experiences, don't hide it. They'll find out anyway. Sometimes you have to even pretend that you don't know so that they can tell you. So do that. So if they fall, to get up. Brush off, start again. No, listen to me. Parents, it's like, oh, we don't know COVID is real. I mean, some of our Jamaicans, people across the world, they don't know that COVID is really real. Yes? But let me tell you, the exams are real. They're coming. It was just this afternoon that our principal got a bulletin from the ministry to say the dates for exams. So the exams are coming. Now you're going to ask the question, is it online or offline? Well, for the most part, the first one is going to be physical space. So we're going to go to school and do that in a booklet. You're going to sit around their desk. And you're going to say, Miss, how are they going to be? They'll, be? they'll find way because they can use the entire school for the basics for the exam that day. So have we been preparing? Or have we been, you know, too, not too into it? Well, it's not too late for a short rain because rain can fall now. Let us start. Encourage them, this man. No more time wasting. So the Christmas season is up on us because Auntie Jody just gave us some Christmas cards. So, I mean, the feeling is right there. But at the same time, relax, do some work. Relax, do some work. So the exams, let me just run by you a little date and then I get back. So the exam date, for example, our ability test is going to be, is going to be February 23rd, 2021. No, trust me, friends, that was the date that they gave us before. And, and COVID is, have not changed it. So it means that it is coming. Then if they push it a little bit back, yeah. Because the other exam is coming. We, we, we still have the question and answer section, um, section you know, where you can express them, you can talk about. But it is coming. The date is already here. It was before. And they sent again, and they have not changed it. So our first exam is in February. So after we have enjoyed ourselves, 
in December, and you step in this class, hopefully in January, it's exam. So if they have wasted some time, it is time to encourage them to let, let, us, let, let, us, let us get on track and do what we can. So ultimately, success has three components. One, dedicated teachers. And you know Excelsior has the most dedicated teachers on the face of this earth. And I know you can say amen to that. The teachers are going way, way beyond duty. Up late at night, they're, they're, they're making PowerPoints, they're writing lesson plans, and they're planning activities, and they get up early, and you look at them, and sometimes the students, I know they're sorry for us now because we look extremely tired, but we're still pressing along. Dedicated teachers, all right? So we need one of the components, dedicated teachers, and we have those. So, no excuse. Then we want enthusiastic parents. And so, parents, if you're not excited about your child going to a, 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 um, a school, Remarkulate or so and excited and excited about them learning, they will not be. You're not excited, or oh, you're, you're just like that. It's a mommy not even notice what is happening. That is not even what know what is happening. So let us just go with the flow. Be excited. And then we want motivated students. So the teachers are, 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 are dedicated, the parents are enthused. The students will be motivated. We like actually. So parents. So let us prepare for the first exam in, um, in, in February, followed by performance task in April, exactly the 22nd. More or less, it, 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 I don't know. It can be online. That might be online. But we still have to prepare. So we can't say performance task is out. So we have to start working on it. So the first one, April 22nd, the second, April 23rd. And then we have the curriculum-based test, which is our four, four subjects, the math, the language arts, the science, and the social studies. And at most of these tests, tests they're going to be um, multiple choice. But they're going to have from the OK. So we call, I order critical thinking. So yes, I see Auntie Jody sharing it. Right, so you can see, see there for yourself. Not fake news, it is real. Parents see them there, right there. So I, I know Miss Jones will cut, cut the part that is relevant to you and send it out. So you can have it to keep and post on your doors or in your refrigerator so you can always look back at the dates. So it is, it is coming, parents. So it, there's no run around. We have to get, we have excess stuff. It's always been on top and we have to continue to do that. So, um, you know, further do I, I ask Miss Linda Campbell, who is no stranger to us, to just guide us through the process, the online process. She's going to take us in the selection of schools. So you don't, you don't select five top schools, yeah? You're going to mix them. So she's gonna, I, I'm not sure if she's here as yet. If she's here, yes, she's, she's here. So we're going to invite Miss Linda Campbell or former principal to join us now and take us through the, the, the choices of we can go about selecting. So we have done so online for us, but she's gonna guide you through so you can always go back and edit. And then we'll have that process to upload to the system. If we're gonna send off the school, we'll send off to SAU. And also inviting parents, different classes at different dates. We'll communicate the dates to you by Thursday or Friday when the classes will come in because we don't the whole COVID thing we don't want everybody to be there at the same time so we can um, sign our forms yes and when Mrs. Scam is finished I'll, I'll just continue where that is concerned so without further ado let us welcome Mrs. Campbell with our virtual welcome yes welcome Mrs. Campbell yes hello are hello. you hearing me yes Miss Rahim thank you hearing you <laughs> Hello, how are you all? Oh, yes. It's so good to see so many persons out. I am absolutely pleased to see that. Wonderful, wonderful. And I am wishing you all good health, success, and that you will find by any means to keep your families together and well. 
I hope the children are continuing to progress. I have great expectations for them. And I am really hoping to see what I would say a top a top lineup of high scores this year. Now, my task, I want to greet firstly, of course, Mr. Holness, our new principal. And um, of course, Madam Vice Principal, or Mrs. Pinnock, um, our grade coordinator, Mrs. Brady Jackson, all the teachers on the team, special shout out to you. And of course, all the parents in the house. And I think I saw a few students also online. So special welcome to all of you. And I'm happy to be a part of what's happening this afternoon. So my job this afternoon is just to talk about choosing your schools, making your school choices. And firstly, I must say that one of the most important thing for a parent to know is to know their child's ability and performance. And the only way the only way that you can know that is by keeping up with what's happening, checking the work, the homework, um, checking in with the teacher, seeing to it that corrections are done and that there is a well-established schedule for revision and study. You need to give them all the encouragement that you can. It will never be too much. And when you see them making that extra special effort, please award them, reward them in some special way. Some children only need a hug. Some might want an ice cream cone. Some might want a little time off to watch a movie. But you know what your child feels good about and what they will see as a suitable award or reward. And I'm encouraging you to do that so that the child will continue to strive until he or she learns on his own that self-satisfaction is enough of a reward. And that's where we are going. Each child must know that I have done my best, I have done well, and I'm satisfied. I feel good about it. So choosing schools are done on two levels. You have five schools to select from the master list of schools, which not only includes schools from in Kingston and St. Andrew, but right across the country. We have had students from Excelsior select schools from as far all the way in Brownstown, um, St. Anne's Bay, York Castle. Um, there's a famous girls' school in St. Anne, um, I'm not remembering right now. I think they wear a little hat, a little straw hat. Yes, Westwood. Westwood, yes, yes, yes. And um, there are other schools too that, you know, if you think that the family is going to resettle in another parish, or maybe there's a faithful aunt or grandma who will watch over your child carefully and is there for your child and you want to send him to maybe a boarding school, that can be done too. It is all left to what you think is best for the child, along with the teacher's um, suggestions and advice. And it is critical that you take the teacher's advice because there is no teacher at Excelsior who is there to put down your child. But because we know them so well, we know what they're capable of, we know their level of performance, we know their rate of improvement, we will advise you to select certain schools and out of that, I'm expecting and hoping that you will cooperate with the teachers so that we will get the best outcome for your children. Now, um, Mrs. Jackson, I'm not sure if it's Ms. Jackson or Ms. Johnson. Do you have the list of schools from which we are to select? Um, 
I'm not sure if they have that I, to put up I on will, the screen. I will bring it up shortly. Oh, do you have it, Mr. Holness? Yes, I'll bring it up shortly. Okay, wonderful. All right. Now, the first thing is to, we need to select five schools from within our parish or across Jamaica, as we said before, you can select a boarding school if you wish. And there is another list that we call a cluster list. And those schools are in near proximity to Excelsior Primary. You're going to select two from that list. So Miss will put, sir will put up the list shortly and we'll get to look at it. Now you and I know that not all schools are created equal. And many of us want our children to go to the very best schools. Oh, here they are. And there's nothing wrong with that desire, but we also have to be real. We have to be realistic in what we are selecting. Now, if you can see across the first section, region one, that's Kingston and St. Andrew, and these are all the high schools including technical schools. And I think um, is Michael practicing junior high is still there. Um, there may be just one or two. There are technical schools like Danoon and I think St. Andrew High School, Technical High School, Kingston Technical High School, and um, you have the traditional high schools. You have boys' high schools, girls' high schools, and co-ed high schools. Now, you have to know which setting your child will best fit in. You have some boys that from this year, girl, you know that they are not paying attention to the teacher. They're going to pay attention to that pretty girl in the class. And that way, they're going to lose out. You have to know if your child is capable paying keen attention in spite of having girls around him. And the same thing with the girls. You have to know if boys are going to be a distraction. In that case, you may want to choose an all boys school or an all girls school. However, if you find that maybe out of experience, your child interacts well with both sexes, then you can choose a co-educational co school and that might be the best bet for your child. You're also going to look at the extracurricular activities that your child is interested in or currently involved in. So for example, if your young man is an excellent member of the school choir or sings very well, you may want to send him to KC that has a chapel choir. Um, Arden also has a fantastic choir. If your child is into swimming, then you may want to consider other schools, JC, um, George's, Immaculate, um, Holy Childhood, Merle Grove, they all have swimming pools. So you can select one that will help to foster those skills because in seven years time, your child will be going to college or university. And one of the things that they look at when they want to select their students is what other activities are, is the child involved in? Can they represent the institution through swimming or singing? or leadership skills. Your child may be a natural born leader, right? So you have to look at all of these things when you're choosing your school because it is critical. There are some schools that do not have a swimming pool, for example. And if your child is excelling in swimming, do not send them to a school that may not have a pool unless your child is in maybe a squad, a swim squad and gets to practice consistently. So I think you have a good idea of what I'm saying. Now, selecting schools. There are some schools that require 
an extraordinarily high pass mark in order to get into that school. What are some of those schools? It's the interjection of the These are now the cluster schools I'm showing you. Oh, you're showing me the cluster schools. Can we go back to the, to the other choices, please? Um, first, and then we'll come to the um, cluster schools. Now, the school in Ligony, they wear gray and red. What's the name of that school? Campion. Campion. And there are many persons who want their children to go to Campion. But if your child is not a strong personality, and if they are not able to cope at the highest level, it makes no sense to put Campion. Another school that demands high, extremely high grades, and we are talking about in the top two percentiles, is Arden High School. Woolmer's Girls is another one. Um, Immaculate Conception, St. Andrew High School for Girls. They all demand very high scores. And if your child has not been working consistently, if the grades in grade four and grade five have not been consistently high, it is of little effect to select those schools. You may be even wasting an opportunity to go to another high school which is more suitable to encourage and to build up your child to be a success later in life. So please, if your child is not performing consistently at an extremely high level, what we would equate with 98, 99% and above. It makes no sense to put in those schools that I just called. Now, if your child has been consistent, um, confident, and the scores from grade four and grade five were very, very good, the, the child continues to work arduously in grade six, then I would say select one or two of those top schools and put them in number one and number two position. Why am I saying putting them in one and two position? If you put a school whose score, let's say, is an average of 90% at the top, and your child gets 97%, they're going to send the child to your first choice. So what you need to do is to grade the schools coming down from one to five, with the highest being at the top, the second highest, and going down the line until you reach number five. If your child is of average, or maybe a little above average, but is working consistently, you can see that they are grasping the concepts and they're making steady progress upward. Then there are several other um, traditional high schools that you could choose from. And looking at the list, you can see Excelsior High, um, Holy Childhood High School, Jamaica College, Kingston College, um, Meadowbrook High, Mona High, um, and so forth. Your teachers will guide you um, so you can ensure that you put those at the top of your list. So you select two or three and you put them in order of your preference, listing them number one, two, and three. Then you will need to put a safety net just in case on the day something happens and the child does not perform to expectation, you need a safety net, two safety net schools. It may be that you, you may have to choose a school like Michael Practicing 
or you may want to send the child to a technical high school, especially if they are very hands-on. You see them pulling things apart and putting them together. Um, they fix things without being taught. Um, they are very hands-on. The technical high schools are among the best for these, these students. If it's a boy, some of the boys' high schools also do several technical subjects, so you can choose those as long as the general performance of your child is very good. Now, if your child is struggling, you know the reading is not up to par, the general performance is not up to par, yes, they may be making some improvements, but it's not altogether yet, then you have to ensure that you choose maybe one or two of the regular high schools, but ensure that you put a technical high school and one of the primary and junior high schools. This is critical because remember, even if they go to a junior high school, let's say micro practicing, for example, which is well established and well, in, well known, by grade nine, they will sit the grade nine entrance test and based on their performance, they can easily be placed in one of the traditional high schools, maybe the one that you chose. So don't look down on these schools because there is another way to get into a traditional high school. But again, you must know your child, you must be realistic, Look at the scores, look at the performance, look at the attitude. Is there discipline, consistency? And you make your choices. Okay, so you choose five schools from this section, this list of receiving schools. And again, I want to remind you that you may want to send a child who maybe is not so focused, but has great ability and is able to do the work to a boarding school where there is a lot of discipline and structure in place for your child. Okay, so you choose your schools from the highest ranking going down the line to the lower ranking at number five position. Then you will have, oh, if you live in St. Catherine, for example, there are high schools that you can select in St. Catherine, you're not limited to Kingston and St. Andrew. There are good high schools in Portmore. There are excellent high schools in St. Catherine. And you can choose those, placing them high enough that based on your child's score, they'll have a good chance of getting into those schools. Remember, the less traveling your child has to do, the less number of hours they spend on the bus or in the car, the better for them because they can use their time to revise and to study and to excel. So that will take care of the first five schools. The ministry now gives you two additional schools to select from. And this is from a list that is called the cluster list. These schools are in reasonable proximity to Excelsior Primary School, and you must choose two, two schools from the cluster list. Whatever you have on the first five, you cannot put them again in the cluster list. So for example, let us say, Daddy went to KC and you want your son to go to KC and you put that at number one. When you have filled in all the other schools down to five and you have to choose a cluster school, you cannot choose KC again. KC can only be recorded once on the complete list of seven schools. So please do not make a mistake and double up on any school name because what you write on the form cannot be submitted at the ministry if you have a school listed twice. 
So please make sure you do that. Your child will not be registered because the system is created to bounce out any double entry. And your child will not be registered to do PEP if you put two schools twice between number one and number seven. So please, I met a parent some years back who put their first choice three times in one, two, and third, first, second, and third place. No, that cannot work. It is seven different schools. So please cooperate with the school so that your, your child can be duly registered at the Student Assessment Unit of the Ministry of Education. All right, are there any questions so far? Is there anything that you are not understanding? Okay, let's see. Good um, evening, Miss Campbell. Yes, good evening. How are you, my dear? Present good evening to all the parents here. Yes, present good evening to you. Okay, when I was filling out my child's application, I did put um, one of the schools from choice in the cluster school but it, it didn't bounce me so i'm wondering now as you say that why did it not bounce okay. us it doesn't bounce for for when you are submitting the form to the school mm -hmm. when the school is going to submit the forms mm -hmm. to the ministry it's going to bounce okay so how can i fix that so that means now you will um speak with your teacher mm -hmm. so that you we will, will fix it when update in the site okay. Pardon me? we will we will fix it you'll fix it okay yes, so what you need to do then is ensure that the teacher knows what the replacement choice is okay i wish i totally wish we had this meeting before now because when we got the information about the forms we were told that there was a certain date for the forms to be filled out and then then we got another email to say um it's like the next day and it's due by midnight so Oh, I wish we had this meeting before. This right, is just to just to clarify that. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. we were we were awaiting the Ministry of Education website, so we wanted to be proactive. So we set out the parents for them to start doing the choice. So they will have an opportunity to. We will be fixing it. So at the time of sending it out to you, we wanted to start the baller road because we were waiting on the ministry to finish the website. So while I understand that point, parent, we will fix everything because we still have until December 31st to do what we are doing. Okay. okay. Right, parent. Um, right. So does that help you to, to understand better what can happen? Yes, ma'am. Thank you much. Hold on. Just a Any other questions? Just a bit of information here. Yes. Um, the last time we had a, I had a meeting with admin, I was informed that these documents, they are, you would still be able to edit whatever you have done prior to now. So you can still go on the system. As soon as you try to retrieve the document, you'll be able to get your, what you have completed with the same information and you can go ahead and edit and make whatever changes that you want on that same document that you have completed. Okay, thank you. That is valuable information. Thank you so much, miss. That's okay. very, very You're welcome, miss. So everybody now knows that if you have to make adjustments, you can access it and make the corrections and resubmit. Okay. Any other questions? Yes, hello. Good night, Miss Campbell. Yes, good night. Hello? Yes, I'm hearing you. Yes, good night. I'm having a bit of problem. My child name has spelled wrong. Oh. So I want to know if that's going to be a problem because it's not spelled correctly. Okay, let me ask you a question. Yes. Is it, is it that wrong spelling on the birth certificate? No. It's not. It's the correct spelling on the birth certificate. Okay, okay. Well, in that case then, and um, so what, it was spelled incorrectly on your form? On no, 
online. That's the email. Yes. The email was spelled wrong. The name and it, yeah, was spelled wrong. Okay. So let me just, let me just interject here. Ensure that the teacher is aware and um, so that the adjustment, the correction can be done. And I am not sure if you are you have access to that part of the form. Let me just interject here, Mrs. Uh, yes, Miss Yes, Mr. Holness. Go ahead. Parents, we will we will be having meetings again with you. You will be hearing about it by Friday, where all the errors will be corrected because we will be editing again. So whatever information that is not correct we will be verifying you will be asked to sign after we have done everything the ministry again is going to send a spreadsheet to us where you will have another chance to edit whatever you would have submitted so all the checks and balances will be put in place to ensure that all the information is correct so you don't have to worry parents as Mrs. is saying, you just need to give us some time and we will be fixing everything. Right. Okay. okay. That's great. Yes, normally there is that period of time where the teachers work together to get those things corrected. So make sure that your child is fully aware of what correction is to be so that when the time comes, it can be done. All right? Um, I see a question here says, if a child was transferred from another school to Excelsior and placed in grade five at Excelsior, how does the grade, how are the grades assess? Turn on the TV, Jer. Well, your child would have done the grade four PEP. Am I correct, um, Ms. Myers? Pass the, pass the, 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 the thing in there. Hello, Miss, Miss Campbell. Is, is this Miss Myers? Oh, no. No, I'm, I'm trying to speak to Patricia Myers. Yeah, I, am. I am answering. Okay, all right. The ointment in the, the fridge door. I did. But somebody's four. mic is open. Okay. Um, no, a grade four PEP wasn't done um, at the school in St. Elizabeth. Oh, well, there is a problem. And you said the child did not take PEP in grade five because there was no grade five PEP test. There was none at the school, no. Okay. So it sounds to me that you're going to have to speak with the principal, Principal Holness, for him to do some background checks at the previous school to ascertain why it wasn't done and to see what the Ministry of Education, in particular the Student Assessment Unit, can do to assist. Um, just, to, just to comment, again, parents, mm -hmm. all of those will be addressed on the online platform. There's a section that will tell us what we will input as transfer and then the student assessment unit will be the one to hand it. So all those queries that you yes. have, you don't have to worry about it. They okay. will be fixed. Anytime. Okay, good. I right. appreciate that. Yes. All right. Thank There's you. There's another question here. Is there an, do you have another question, Ms. Myers? No, no. That okay. wasn't me. Thanks. All right. There's another question here which says the grade four PEP and the grade six exams will be calculated together. Oh, it's a statement to arrive at the final grade. Yes, that is correct. So your child didn't do grade five PEP, but they will use the grade four results plus the grade six results and calculate their placement. Okay. Um, is there any, any other question? Ms. Campbell? Yes, dear. Hello, it's basically like this. Good night, everyone. It's basically the same question I'm asking over. My child has been transferred from another school to grade five at Excelsior. Yes. She did her grade four achievement test, right? Yes. Would it be my responsibility to get the grades from that school to you guys or 
you getting their grades from that school on your own? The norm is that when you apply to Excelsior, then the grades should have been requested by the parent and submitted to Excelsior. Oh, that's how it goes usually. I'm not sure if the process has changed. So maybe I'll allow Mr. Holness to speak to that. But you should what, have brought with you. What, grade, what, grade, what grades are the parents? What grade are you talking about, parents? Uh, she came, she did grade four at that particular school, then she started grade five at Excelsior. Uh huh. So, because she did the, the test, grade four, she's referring to the grade four PEP test. Well, if you yes. are referring to the grade four PEP test, that would be at the ministry. So, I would have to. No, the ministry would have it in their database because remember, the right, grade right. four PEP test is a ministry test so they will have it so when we submit it to them transfer and tell them the school that you are coming from they will get it in their database so they will have it okay I remember right. it's one ministry even though it's different regions yes yes, yes. Uh, so may i have may i add right. also? thank you very much you're welcome and also um parent um the child was registered from excelsior from grade five so it will not affect your child because the child's name went down from grade five for Excelsior. So they're yeah. going to back up the master list. And if your child's name is on it, you're okay. So you got to have every information, information that they need to have with their ministry. So they send us everything. The child's name on it. If your child's name is not on it, then we have to further. Right. Oh, okay. Then. I was, was registered from grade five. No problem. Wouldn't be a problem. Okay. Thank All you very right. much. Good. All right, um, I am not seeing any other questions. And is, is there anything else, Mr. Holness or Mrs. Jackson, that you would want me to address? Excuse me, Miss. Yes, yes, Ms. Flemings. Um, I'm not seeing, I'm looking on the, the list. And I'm not seeing campus. There are certain particular schools that I'm not seeing. Yes. Is there a reason? Um, all right. That's the list that is on the screen now. Which school are you talking about? No, I can't see the list on the screen. Um, there was a link sent to the, the chat. So I click on the link. I'm talking about Camperdown. Camperdown is on the list. Yes, it's it's on the cluster school list. It's no, I'm list. talking about the one that the one that show you the percent, how much average you have to have to read to go there. Oh no. Um, just that 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 is a different that is a different thing from what we are talking about. We are talking about where somebody I guess would have posted something about the different ranking for the school. That is not something that we are looking at. For us, we just deal with the cluster school and the other school that we So we don't deal with a percentage. Ministry doesn't give us a list to say the child must have a set percentage to go to a school. So we're not looking at that list. Just, just look at the list that we are presenting on the screen. Yes. Okay. Okay, okay, then. Well, this is Yes, it's okay. But the lily, the list that is from um on the screen, it's yes, you can see it's the not here. No, I cannot see it clearly. Oh, okay, okay, all right. Um, what, what sorry, sorry, what we can do, parents, is just supply you guys, supply everybody, we supply, uh, we supply you with the clusters, the schools we can supply that so you can have um can go through again. So when you're editing, you'll have an idea. So once if you have, um, for example, have Capital as one of your first five, and it's in the cluster, you, you don't have to write again. You can select two other schools. So you'll find that the schools in the cluster, some of the schools in the cluster, the cluster, they are the same schools for the, um, the first five. So if you have selected those already, you don't repeat them. So you can go and select other schools for your cluster. Okay. 
I see someone asking about NSRS cards. Um, is there any challenge with that? Mrs. They, 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 they can pick those up at, at the school, Mrs. Campbell. Those okay. are so if you, are, if you have not received yours, you can go to the school and collect on a Tuesday or a Thursday. Miss, Miss Jackson, good night. We picked it up, but we're not sure what it is for. So those are cars we're going to take you through school, through high school, because the numbers are already on the, the registration forms. But it's for your purposes. Okay. And I can add a little of in, information on that. Mm -hmm. um, the NSRS cards are really saying that your child is a registered student of a primary school in Jamaica. Okay, they have thank you. The, birth, the authenticity of the child's birth certificate. Okay, miss. And they have assigned a special number which will take the child all the way through to the end of high school. Okay, miss. All right, so even when they do CHC, that same number will be on their exam paper. Okay? okay, right. So keep that card very, very safe. It's important. All right. Okay. Um, yes, sorry, is going to Miss Maxwell. Sorry, is going to mail the um, the lists. I believe if you haven't already gotten it. Okay, and the um, and the cluster schools also. Right, Mr. Holness. Yeah. Right, right. Well, can we also get the, the letter that um, Auntie Jody was showing at the beginning with the exam dates and stuff? Because some of us didn't get the dates. All, all information yes, will be passed to you, parents. As soon as possible. Okay, miss. Okay. Any other questions for Mrs. Campbell? Okay, that's okay. it. Thank you very much, Mrs. Campbell. You're most welcome. welcome. It was my pleasure to be a part of the meeting. And again, I wish the team at the school, led by Principal Holness, all the very, very best. And also to the parents, good health and success in everything that you put your hand to. And please pray for your children. Bless them and pray for them. Encourage them every day. God bless you and thank you for the opportunity to share with you. Thank you, Ms. Campbell. I highly appreciate it. Yes, you're welcome. For being a part of us as usual, you never leave us or forsake us. <laughs> That's true. Thank you, Miss. Yes, you're welcome. At this time, we'll have, okay, Sir Oness, to speak to you about the reopening of school. We're going to have school in January, so, see, so to speak. And then we'll have our question and answer. We'll have more question and answer segment. We'll go into that after. Sir? Yes, good afternoon again, parents, teachers, and for the students who are here. I want to really wish also thank Mrs. Campbell you know, once an Excel Sorian will always be one, and we appreciate you coming on to really, you know, help our parents as they move into this aspect of their child's life. Now, parents, I know you are all wondering what is happening. You know, we set this meeting today, and I called the education officer earlier and any information to give my grade six parents um so sir holness we are waiting and at about possible last some minutes to five we were sent that bulletin that was shared earlier with the dates as i sat going through the mails, I heard on the radio parents that they will be pushing back the dates for the PEP. But then when I checked the dates and when I spoke to Mrs. Brady Jackson, she said, 
sir, but these dates look like the normal dates. So parents, I don't always go by what is out in the media if it is not in black and white from the Ministry of Education, then as far as I'm concerned, it is not factual. When I get it in black and white, then it is factual. So at this time, I can say to you that where reopening is concerned in January, we are not certain if we will be reopening face to face. But what I can tell you is that your child or your ward or children, they will be adequately prepared for their upcoming exams. So just like how we didn't wait until October 5th to start the ball a roll, we started from as far back as September 14th when we, you know, had our simulation exercise, which prepared the way or paved the way for October 5th. We will be putting in things in place for reopening in January. Now, the team met and we, are, we have decided that we will, if we are opening face to face, we will have to operate on a somewhat of a shift basis. Now, we are short at least five classroom space and as a result, we are not able to accommodate all our students even if even on a social distancing basis now this is what we have proposed and this is well let me not use the word proposed this is what we will be having our infant department they will be operating the usual time however Grades one to three, the school will be divided, <clears throat> sorry, all grades will be divided into two groups, group A and group B. So each teacher, each teacher's class will be divided into group A and group B. Grades one to three will come in at 7.30 and they will have classes up to 11.30 on Mondays to Thursdays. So group A would come in on Monday and Tuesday. Group B will come in on Wednesday and Thursday. Fridays will be online. Our bigger students in grades four to six, they will be coming in at 12.30 to 4 p.m. And so you'll have group A, Monday and Tuesday, group B, Wednesday and Thursday. And on Friday, we will be going online with all the students between 7.30 and 12. And then the teachers will be moving into their planning session. So that's the proposal. That's what we have. If the ministry say to us that we must go face to face. We have been inspected by the Ministry of Health and it's the first time in my life I've seen a 95 out of 100 being unsatisfactory. And that was really, um, you know, so we, there was one item on the list that we, we had to, we had to, we need to get out of the way and it's our fire is extinguishers just before the health inspector came, just before they expired on us. Um, we have since corrected that and we are awaiting for them to just come back in and ensure that they look at it to know that we have fixed it. They came like, the Friday, they came on a Friday, 
and earlier in the week or the week before, late the week before, the extinguishers um, were expired. We have made the call. We have fixed it. In terms of everything else, we are on par. We still need the funds, parents. There are so many things we would like to do. If we had the funds, we would not have to go into a shift because the previous administration, they worked assiduously at that resource building that you would have seen, but we need some funds to have it up and running. And because we are unable to finish that building, then we have to go this route. It is very important that parents of grade six work with us. We need the support. Um, we know you are anxious. We know you are not comfortable in terms of, you know, this online thing and you believe that your child or your ward or your children, they are not, you know, really ready. But there are some things that we have absolutely no control over. And this is what COVID has done to us. But what I can also say is that the five teachers that are presently teaching grade six, they are trying their endeavor. They are pushing, they are working, they are planning, and you know, they are committed to the task of getting our students ready for their exams. So that is how we will be reopening. If we can't go face to face, then we will go back online uh, based on my figures that come in to me on a daily basis, I can say that we are reaching, you know, 99% of our students, if not 100% of our students. So where we are concerned, we are reaching them the teachers are there at their classes. They are using a number of different techniques to get the students, you know, ready. And they are to be commended for the job that they are doing. So parents, that is what we are, we are putting to you for the reopening if we have to go face to face. It means that we will have to get the grades one to three students off the compound, off the campus, off the school grounds by the, within half an hour after school dismissed so that we can sanitize and prepare ourselves for our four to six students. So that is what we have on the table. Do you have any questions regarding this? you may ask your questions now. Yes, sir. Hello, hi, good night. I'm seeing Mr. and Mrs. Bogle. First question, What's yes, Mr. and Mrs. Bogle. Yes, good night, everybody. Good night, principal, past principal, and all teachers and parents. My question is in relation to what you just said about the time for grades four to six students. Yes. Um, I have two students who are two children who are part of the Excelsior family. One is at the infant department and obviously grade six. Now they both live in St. Thomas. We live in St. Thomas. And uh, for my son to attend school at that particular time and for him to get home that is going to be extremely difficult for us to navigate. So with that said, and I am sure that there are other parents who lives outside of Kingston, who lives <coughs> further in St. Catherine and other areas, what plans or what, you know, would we put in place for those students? All right, so good question, mother. But it's rather a hard question. Um, it is up for the, you see, parents, we 
we are short of classroom space. And um, four o'clock, I'm seeing a person saying that it is too late. We have absolutely no other option right now. As I said, we have to take into consideration physical distancing and we are short of at least five classroom space. And it is as a result of that why we have to go this route. So it is for the parents that they will now have to you know, make some arrangement. They can come in where we have, I don't think we are going to have a number of parents with a challenge like yours where one child is in gray in the infant school and the other is in the in the grade six, you know, that wide, that gap. I doubt we have so many, we have a lot of parents like that. So that's something that we will have to, we will have to um, address. But right now, the parents will have to ensure that school, school, um, they, they make arrangements. Additionally, um, grade six normally end extra lesson at 4 p.m. So it is still within the time frame for which the parents would make arrangements. Remember, we are not going, we are not going to, we are not going to keep them longer than four. So on a regular basis, four o'clock would be a time when parents would get their children because you know that extra class that they normally attend. Um, excuse um, me, sir. Yes. yes um, yes, this is Anika. Sir. I'm not. Um, my. And I can't raise my hand. No problem. I'm no very touching. I'm, I'm very, um, I don't even know where to start. No. My pro I won't say the time is my problem, even though, it, because as you have said before, usually children will leave at that time. My thing is that um, this is supposed to be a team effort. And you're, you have said that this is your only option, but did, um, could it be possible that you throw it out to the parents and we all come together? Because I have two children going to Excelsior. One is my niece, but she's like my child, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm saying, for example, my, my son's father will transport them because of all COVID and everything. Of mm -hmm. course, they won't be taking public transportation, neither will be putting them in taxi. Say, mm -hmm. for example, so with this shift thing, um, basically, he's not going to be able to work because he'll leave in the morning, take the smaller one to school, then have to, before the smaller one dismiss, he'll have to go back for the bigger one, mm -hmm. take the bigger one to school, then he'll have to leave again, take the smaller one, transport home, and then come back again. So what, I mean, for work, work, work-wise, he won't be in a job. So let, let me ask a question. So I'm saying, um, I have um, think about, I'm saying, what aren't is it really that there are no other option because what about what we initially um i think um at the beginning of the school year i think it was um suggested that might be three days for one for upper school and two days for lower school because so let this me, is let really me, i understand your pain mommy and you know you would have heard me saying we are short five classrooms Spaces. Initially, when the plans were being put in place, the government made some commitments. For example, the government mentioned that schools having a space problem, they will be, if we can identify an area where we can rent, sorry about that, then that is a, where we can rent, you would have heard it that's an option we can explore. We also, we were also told that they would be helping us to at least get two classrooms on the existing building that we are, we, we, we have been doing some work on. They will be assisting us. Now, all of that not coming our way again. So we now have to make adjustments. Additionally, when we sat and we said, okay, let us see if from the parent contribution, if we can get some funds in to have those buildings ready. The parental contribution, is it, it, it had been wiped out. Our honorable minister mentioned that parents are not, they should 
redirect the funds that they would normally use to help the school. We can't force, we have pleaded. So, Ms. Aniko, we are faced with a crisis. And that is why I, 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 I said we have no other option. We can't allow the grade six alone to come in and the other grades go online, even though our grade six, they are at the end of it and the other grades. That would create another problem with the other parents. So Ms. Aniko, I understand your challenge, the real challenge that you, 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 you have explained, but we are still open to suggestions. So, if, so even though we have done this, if there is a suggestion that you have and you want to call me personally and talk to me about it, no problem. We can talk about what alternative arrangement we can make for you, seeing that you have two, but as far as I'm concerned, we are now caught between a rock and a hard place. Sir, Mr. and Mrs. Bogle again. Before, before Mrs. and uh, Mrs. Bogle, do you understand me, Miss Aniko? Can you tell me your last name? Mackintosh, sir. Ms. Mac That's okay. Ms. You can call me Aniko, sir. I do understand, but right. I, so we, we, we I, I am feeling, I am feeling in a pain right now. Yes, I understand, I, I, and I'm not going to bash the school or anything because I do understand this is not something that we planned for. You understand, this is a pandemic. Mm -hmm. But at mm -hmm. the same time, we need to come together. We need to try to make it work for everybody, and for this, this, um, basically this, um. What do you say? This plan. This plan. Mm -hmm. I don't see it working. I mean, even though sometimes the plan seems difficult at first, and you know, you just have to try, but this looks real one, challenging one, for one me. Of, one of the things that we are trying to do, Miss Miss. So let us say you and have sorry, two, sir, and that will be out of a job with this plan. I, I understand that. Well, let us say we had a, a holding area where the other child could be engaged until, let's say, the bigger one is ready. Right now, I don't know if you all know where the manse was, that big building, that, that building that was behind the school. We, it has been demolished, and we are now trying to get it in a state of readiness to, to have it as a holding area. We have a plan for it. But just getting that alone ready is going to cost us in excess of $200,000. We have absolutely no funds in the school. So Everything, excuse me, sir. With that, mm -hmm. with that $200,000, you comment. said that building can be finished? No, to... not the building. A holding area to finish okay. the building. Right. Let me tell you. If all the parents, we have 1,000 parents. And if all the parents say, Mr. Holness, we are going to commit, let us say, and I'm just hypothetically, $5,000, and we get that building up and running, right? I can tell you that we don't have to go this route. But parents, I mean, the ministry, even today, I call the ministry just to see what help they can give us. We have, we have, we have tried getting corporate Jamaica online, and, um, you know, to, to, when I say online, to come on board with us, it takes time. Normally, we would have our, our fundraising activity that will generate some income. It, it's all, it, it, it's really, really, the funds have dried up, Miss Anika. So we are trying. All right? But I understand the case, and you and I can have more, more conversation because I don't think we have 20 or 30 parents with your challenge or even Mrs. Bogle's challenge in grade six. I, right? I have that challenge too, Mr. Debbie has, Debbie has, <laughs> Debbie has that challenge. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Bogle, you can make your point. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, my suggestion, mm -hmm. or is it possible that online classes mm -hmm. could continue for those persons with those challenges? How, how would it continue for those persons? So you are saying that while so like Miss and Miss Miss McIntosh, her her child will stay home and join online with the class. Right. Um, that would have to be that would have to be an, a, a special arrangement that we will have to make. But you also have to remember the teacher. 
because it is it is it is it is difficult for the teacher to be in class teaching face to face while teaching the online. The, the, the online. All right. Now we had put that to our teachers, right? And you know what is our challenge? If all forty three, am I correct, Ms. Johnson? All forty three teachers should be at school and their computers are up on the Wi-Fi that we have, right? We in problem. Now look at this. If we call Flo to ask Flo to upgrade our service, it is going to cost us. I don't have the figure in my head. Um, I, I'll get it shortly. Now the ministry gives us, gives primary school $60,000 for internet and telephone for the entire year. You, you, you're hearing me, Miss, Miss, Mrs. Vogel? Yes, sir, I'm that's hearing you quite all, clear. That's all the ministry, ministry gives us, <laughs> right? No, it is through our fundraisers, it is through the contribution that you, the parents, have given where we're able to, 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 to pay our bill. No, the cost to upgrade that internet so that all our teachers can have access is going to cost us far more than 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 that sixty thousand dollars for the for the year. It is it is one thousand four hundred and forty US per month for internet alone. Right? and the telephone business is included. So we have a challenge. Right so now. throwing things out. Yeah, I, 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 know. <laughs> I know you're throwing things out and we appreciate it. We appreciate it, right? So, so that is why I'm saying we are caught between a rock and a hard place. If, 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 if we, 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 over the years, um, the team at Excelsior, they did a number of, of initiatives that makes the school what, is, what it is today. And I remember former PTA president who did a very good job. And when he was speaking about the parental contribution, the parents took him on and said, government said we must do this or we must do that. The government gave each primary school $2,500 per student. You know what a high school student get? A high school school get per student, they get over seventeen thousand dollars per student. We want to give a quality education. We want let me we want to give that. We want to continue and want to improve on it. It takes cash to care. No, if we had it, we wouldn't have to go this route. So we are we are we are we are, we are high. If, if parents, if you have a better suggestion, we still have time, we can adjust. You can give me your suggestion, I can take it back to my team. We can discuss it and we can, we can, we can, we can put it in place. Let me give you a case in point. We have, I don't think any other primary school has the number of wash station that we have. Each block, has two sanitizing stations. Uh, we, it, it is costing us over half a million dollars to put those in. Yes, we got some help from the ministry, but we had to go into the, 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 the remains from last academic year to do that. Right? Um, I see someone saying, why not have parents make contact with teachers about multiple students and see if the school can put all their children on the same shift. That is a suggestion, and that is, that's why I said, um, for those parents who are hearing me who, who you have a child in another grade, you know, you can make contact with us. We can have a special meeting for you as the time draws closer and we'll see what special arrangement we can make. So we are not saying all is lost, Miss McIntosh and Miss Bogle and Miss Debian. But you can we can take that information, we can meet and we can see what we can do as a school. Because we are not going to leave you out in the cold like that. Because we want your child 
to get the best education. But it would be so good if all of your parents come over tomorrow or Thursday and give us some a part of that parent contribution and, and help us. We know it's hard on you, you know. We know it's hard on you. Right now, parents, even, even some of the basic things that we need to do in the office, photocopy. Now, we will have to photocopy 134 parents. 100 and about 30, how many parents, how many students we have, Miss Brady Jackson in um in the in the grade we have 132 right yes sir 132 132 we will have to print 132 papers for you parents to come in next week you will hear more about that to sign that up to have it on file because when a when a student is transferred let us say you transfer your child to another school the school requests certain documents from us and we have to have it. So we have to find resources out of nowhere for that. We have a website that gives you information. It takes cash to care. We have the rain web that we have to pay per year so that you can have your reports in, in, in you know, online. So all of those things we have to take into consideration. And again, parents, things don't look pretty financially. You want to have school for all grades. Why the first suggestion of one to three go Monday and Tuesday and four to six Wednesday? Why this arrangement can't work? So um, Desmond, can you just unmute your mic and, and talk to me? You are saying that one to three go Monday and Tuesday and four to six on Wednesday, and I think probably you are talking about Thursday. That's basically what we have. But remember, we have, we have, we have to divide the student into A and B. So what is going to happen? We are going to have the one to three B still coming in late. But I will, I'll take your suggestion and I will meet back with my team. Sir, so in that case then, um, for the persons who have two children, upper school and lower school, place those two child on the same shift. How would we do that? In the sense of when you're grouping the A, remember you said that is an option that you're looking at for, to have one set of children from one to six on one shift and from one to six on the other? All right, so you're saying that find the other students in the other group. And when we're grouping them, we try as best as possible to, to group them, the them according to their household, sisters no, and sisters, brothers and no, brothers. No problem. The, 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 the teachers will look into that. That is a suggestion. As I said, we are going to meet back with our team and uh, we'll, we will look. Uh, the other suggestion I was thinking for the parent who lives in St. Thomas, if you're working in Kingston, this is just an option. It's not everybody office allows it, is to just bring both child in the morning. One stays with you until the shift change over, and then you'd have left work by say four thirty, five o'clock. Then you pick up both child. Then you would have one with you in the crossing over section. That's a, that's a suggestion. If your office allows you to have your child there, that's another problem. Right. The and thing is, that is a police officer who works in Saint Catherine, and oh, mommy is a teacher yeah. who works in Saint Thomas. So that's the issue. Oh, that's. It. Your, 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 Bogo, your challenge, I, I keep repeating myself and I don't want to sound like one of those scratch records that keep repeating. There are just some things that we have no control over. But in your case, Mrs. Bogo, Miss McIntosh and Miss Debian, there are 100 and there are 100 parents online. And so far, only three parents are coming up front to say they have a serious challenge. Now, that is good news because we can then look at how we, what we can do for those three parents because I'm pretty sure everybody hearing me and if there were other parents with that challenge, it, the whole screen would light up. Sir, I have that challenge. Sir, I have that challenge. Sir, I have that challenge. So we can look into it. 
sir i have that challenge oh, but Lord, i'm just I'm... listening to hear mm-hmm. what you guys have to say so it doesn't make any sense all of us are going to say we have the same problem yeah, we're going to hear everybody has problem and then we see if it's, we can just compromise Right, so 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 that's a point, but it would also give us an idea of how many parents. But you are right. Some yes, parents. Yes, well, I have, I have, I have uh, two upper school, school children. Two upper, well, they will be they will be on the same ship. What we have to look okay. at is how is to is to make sure that as the first as the parents mentioned, to see if we can get them both in the same groups. So you don't have Sorry. one. All right, any other question, parents? It is, it is. Sir, I have that challenge too as well. My son is in grade two and my daughter is in grade six. Where, where do you live? Um, I live in Augustown. So your, 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 your challenge can do one that can easily be fixed because you're living basically Augustown, isn't it, in Kingston? See with me, yes. I'm coach. Right, so you're, you wouldn't have much of an issue. All right, so parents, do you, do you have any other questions? Question you have to ask, it is 8.06. My teachers have to go and, you know, get themselves Sir, prepared Miss? mentally. Sir? I seen Debbie Ann and then I see Chelsea. Debbie Ann first. Uh, okay, sir. So the next suggestion is to, based on what report you'll get from your meeting with the ministry, have another meeting with all the parents again, like you did in the beginning imploring them to pay the school fee for the betterment of our child education so we can get back into school functionable. Thank you for that, Miss Debian. It would be that, good if all 111 right. parents here, if they come Thursday and give us a little thing. I would, I would be so happy. Thank you for that. Yes, Miss Chelsea Swell, I like your first name. Chelsea, not my favorite team, though. <laughs> <laughs> Sir, this is, does, this is regarding the first matter we discussed earlier with the form. Yes. Is it that you can go back on the same link and you can edit? Because when I went there, it's like you get a fresh form. If you go back and you get a fresh form, just, just, just... Um, do it over do again. It over. Do it over, yeah. Okay. You see, parents, yes, we could. I didn't want to come to a meeting unprepared. So while we take the suggestion that we sh- this meeting should have been held before the form, because we know that the form is editable and you can change it, that wasn't much of a problem. We really wanted, we really wanted to, 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 to hear from the ministry before we come to you. You will be coming in. The teachers are going to meet and they will be passing on information again to you. Next week, there will be meetings where you will come in and you will be filling out a form that will be also be used by our teachers to go online and to, to, popul- to finish populate the form that the ministry would have sent to us. So let me uh-huh. just backtrack. So oh, it will be online. The ministry, we have all the students name already in the system that the yes, ministry sir. would have sent to us they uploaded it we are going to go in and we are going to edit it so we are going to make sure that the names are spelled correctly we are going to make sure that the, the choice of schools they are correct we are going to make sure that where it is a transfer student that is in place and then you will be getting a spreadsheet the ministry will be generating a spreadsheet based on the training we went to and you will be coming in another time to sign it to ensure that the information that we input into the in, into the system that it is indeed correct so there are a number of checks and balances that will be in place and that's sir, have an... sorry uh-huh. so you will get the chance to Sir? Sir, I have another question. It's regarding the PEP exam. Will there be any time to administer like a mock exam? I know in the past they usually do that to kind of sensitize the students with the exam environment and the feeling outside of just doing the regular test, the classwork and stuff. Hmm. All right. So, um, I don't know if the ministry is going to have a mock exam. No, not the ministry, the school. Does the school facilitate that? 
Miss Grady normally, Jackson is going to answer you. Yes, yes. Normally we'll do that. So if we're permitted to do that, we're going to um the specific space, yes, we'll do that. So you don't have to worry about that. Whatever the plans are, coming in the future, we we'll notify our parents. So you won't be left in the dark. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Miss. Normally, we'll do that. Excuse me. Good evening. Yes, Miss Williams. Yeah. Um. I'm think like home. My son has um. Uh. One of the he, he has asthma, right? Mm -hmm. And sending him out back is not really something that I'm up for. But it's even worse for so late in the evening. Mm -hmm. Is it possible to you say so? Ninety nine percent of the the the, the Excel says out online. Is it possible to get the remaining that is not online online? And that we can continue in this environment until the school can fix what it needs to be fixed for the five classrooms or whatever it is. If, if the ministry says that we have to engage a parent face to face, we have to engage a parent face to face. We can't take a decision, even though we have almost one hundred percent. Yes. What about the and asthma and sickle right. cell and so, kind of things? Right. So, so again, that again is another challenge. No, even though I say. Put it in context, even though I say we reach almost 100% of our students, it doesn't mean that every day we have the 132 because you have the unstableness of the internet. Where's a parent, Miss Williams? So, we, 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 we the, the internet sometimes fluctuates, it gives the parents a problem. Um, sometimes the parents' devices give some challenges, so we can account for 100%. But we don't have every, we have the majority day to day, but we don't have everybody online, but we have reached everybody. And for those who who, who, who have underlining issues, that is something that we will have to we will have to address. Sir. So I come in, I come in, Mr. Anderson. Uh, we have to take them into consideration, but we can't go back online if the ministry says we must open face to face. Okay, um, so what I was thinking is, sir, would it, the, the, the period of the, 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 the two child, at, um, one is a junior and one is a senior, right? Mm -hmm. the one that is a junior, could that child that be in A group mm -hmm. and the one that's a senior would also be in A group? That means that both, both child and the separate days will come to school in the morning. So the father will only pick up the child that is on the A group on that particular day and take him to and from school or to or fr to, to from home to the parent and where then would, where would we hold the where would we hold the the one in the afternoon? No, what no, what I'm saying, the, you are are you saying to us that um the four to six would would be designated the, on the evening shift for um. Yes, the four, to, the four to six are coming listen, at 12.30. That's what I'm saying, you know, sir. Could it this way? Um, one to three, Monday, Tuesday, and maybe Wednesday. They come. I, I, I do the same shift thing. And then for the um, for this four to six, they will come in say Wednesday afternoon, Thursday morning, Friday morning. All right, so you are saying instead of having one to three and uh, instead of having everybody, even though we have them in group coming on one day, what we yeah. do is have one to three Monday and Tuesday, four to six Wednesday and Thursday, and that would eliminate. and so, uh, make... Yeah, something like that. And, right. and, and they start the group. So the, 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 the parent that other child in the up lower lower school know that that, that that they will only pick up this child on these two days. And then the one for, for, for the senior, they know for Wednesday and Thursday, they only have one trip to make. All right, so it's a, it, 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 is, it, 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 it is a suggestion. And um, as I said, it's a team effort and I will talk back to my team. Yes, sir. I, 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 I'm big man thing. Me, we wish me to have the money. I'm not as gay. The two hundred thousand, but that's gay that. But we not have it. But you, but you have the parent contribution part. You yeah, give you, you'll, you'll get the parent contribution. All right. So you don't have to worry about that. All right, no problem. Yeah, man. But we wish me to have it. Let's get you. All right. But I, I, what, I, I, what, 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 what we, 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 what we wanted was that for each day, our, our 
we have at least half of the school being being engaged but i listen to what you're saying you're saying let the let the one let them come on monday and tuesday the, and then the four to six i think that was discussed and there was a challenge with that my mind is tired right now brain is tired right now uh but we will we will look back at that we will look back at that all right any other question thank you mr anderson anytime you come in come and see me so we can meet uh, good evening sir again yes mr johnson um i am totally lost as to what you guys are talking about because i left um from before the, the computer but i am hearing something about shift so i just want to ask are you talking about school being reopened on shift and what time would the students come in for school because i didn't hear the initial part of it all right so what we are saying um miss johnson is that we are short classroom space and we are saying that the grades one to three will come in on with, with the school each class will be divided into group a and b group a grades one to three will come in on monday tuesday in the morning 7 30 to 11 30 while group a for four to six will come in in the afternoon 12 30 to four and uh, the group b will come in on thursday wednesdays and thursdays fridays would be online that's basically in in summer what we are discussing all right let me ask you a question now sir totally understand that as it relates to space that's the best thing you could do but as for me and my child who live in portmore and we don't drive and he has stayed the bus he has to go into the transport center and because of the covid thing now that we're dealing with and the social distancing once the bus is full they're no, they won't take standing passengers and when the child is let out of school at four o'clock from excelsior Street to get into halfway tree maybe the buses are coming from down road and they're full can't get on a bus because everyone passed gone up full because that's peak hour when he finally get one and get into the transport center for him to get one to go to portmore my child is going to be out there them kind of hours there so are you so guys that, thinking about that for persons who so, don't drive so what are you suggesting miss daly because no, i'm just asking i can't get so, to that because honestly but we we i'm answering we we don't have the answer for that because we are saying that the parents will have to make some but it's obvious that the print the ministry is not thinking about the persons who don't drive and have to, to, to traverse the public transportation. Remember that the schools are normally let out at 2.30, latest 3.30, and by then children will be on their way home. But a child is going to be let out of school at 4 o'clock, peak hours. Remember now that they have my son have to take him not take taxi because I him have to take the public buses. And remember now, because of social distance, as I already said, the buses are going to fill. And if they pass, mm -hmm. what is going to happen to your children at that time of the evening? And that is and that is a very good question. An answer to that, you know, mommy, mm -hmm. is that we can make a special arrangement for all our Portmore students, and we have a bus coming in to pick them up would the parents pay for that so we can always find a bus and okay so we have when we do our checks we have let's say we have 40 students going into or I said 30 students going into Portmore we get two bus come and take them over would you parents put the cost of that how much how much because normally when them say school bus you know right so that is why I'm saying that some of the queries that you you some of the questions it is really for the parents to put transportation um to to to, to sort out their child's transportation all right listen to me on a normal circumstance mm -hmm. circumstances when when we have regular schools and stuff for mm -hmm. a busman to take your child my child from from portmore to school five days a week i used to look at a cost which i had declined for four thousand dollars for the week to take the child home from school may avoid that because it's cheaper for him to put the money on the bus card and jump on the bus and come home remember now covid is happening and there are lots of persons parents in the school that is not working mm -hmm. so me know say if you go get a bus sir and when the bus come the bus now got take thousand dollars 
or two five or he might go one take him because at the end of the day he might go in a traffic he might forgot everybody had all about in a port more on the length of stay and the traffic and them so if you take into consideration for gas and as i said miss johnson i understand it mm -hmm. you are you you are absolutely correct um we we, we as i've as i've mentioned earlier we are caught between a rock and a hard place. We are not insensitive to your, your, your need and, 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 and what is happening, but there are just some things that the school cannot do and that the parents will just have to look at what is best and to make some additional sacrifice and to have further discussion with us. The, the suggestion about, um, I'm um, having one to three coming on two days and four to six coming on another day. We can explore it. We will look at it. I know, I know we had looked at it and there were some challenges with that. So I will go back to my team and find out what we have discussed right now. My brain um, sort of freezing up, but we will, we will, we will look back at the suggestions. And and for them to be in school until four o'clock, that's the last resort. But 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 uh, we are not saying it's the last resort. If a better suggestion comes up, we will explore it. But you know, mommy, under other circumstances, um, you know, sometimes the students they do stay at school until four o'clock and then leave because they have extra classes. Some of them in involving extracurricular. At them time, they serve them could have push and chuck up and push and go in at the bus. No, they can't go in. They Once the bus is filled, it's going to pass them that by. Is, that, is, that is true. So we'll have, to, we'll have to go back. But there are some questions that we can't, we can't, um, we don't Finish have the answer. that they take the children's best interest at heart. But having mm -hmm. children in school until four o'clock in the evening, that, that's a no, no. Because if when they used to let out all one o'clock, they treat them so bad on the road, what is going to happen? And it's not every parent that can go to the school to pick up them children. Honestly, it's cheaper sir, for you to put the bus card, even though sometimes it's not safe to see the little ones on the bus by themselves. But honestly speaking from a parent who not have everything hundred, sometimes it's cheaper for you to put the money on the card and send the child. Just pray that them go and come safe. Your concern is real. All right. Um, thank you, Miss Johnson. Oh. All right, so parent, uh, we are coming down to a close. Um, so that is our position right now. We will explore. We have we have gotten some suggestion. We will look back at it and we will communicate. But please keep abreast of your various WhatsApp groups. The teachers will be giving you information. And uh, remember, you can call the school. You can send us. You can send us a, an email and you can come in and, and, and talk. I will make a final plea, parents, if you can come and help us financially. I want to thank you all, and I'll now ask Mrs. Nain, is Miss Nain? Yes, sir, I am, yes, sir, I am here. All right, okay. so just before, just before Miss Nain, so parents, please email us your suggestions so that we will be meeting again next week as a team to fine tune the plan. So send us your suggestions, email it to us. You have the school email. We will put it again in the chat and uh, send us the, the, the suggestions and we are open to listen. So we are not, we are not antagonistic towards you. We listen and we will work in the best interest of the students as best as possible. Thank you very much. Over to you, Miss Lane. Okay. Sir, yes, sir. Good evening. I just typed a question. I forget the question mark, but um, I was just referring to two days of school. Is that enough time to cover the necessary materials for class, for exam, sorry? We will, we, 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 yes, it, it will, in addition to, remember, on a Friday, we will also be engaging them online. And what I can tell you is that the ministry, they have sent out what they will be doing on the test. So it's not like the full curriculum will be followed as was in previous years. All right, so your child, Mr. Russell, will definitely 
cover all the material that is needed for the examination. All right? Thank you, sir. Okay, yes. thank you. You're welcome. Yes, Miss Lynn. According to St. Ambrose, who lived many years ago, no duty is more urgent than that of returning thanks. So I am delighted to have been given the pleasant duty of delivering the vote of thanks this evening. A warm and graceful evening to our valid guests, Mrs. Campbell, former principal, Mr. O'Holness, principal, worthy teachers and parents. Mrs. Campbell, this evening we had the opportunity to hear your thoughts on the selections of schools. You have enlightened our minds and enhanced our knowledge. You may be retired, but always a teacher at heart. Thank you, Miss. A special mention to our respected principal, who has clearly outlined the plans for the upcoming term in January, if we are to engage in the face-to-face -face learning. It is said that the virus can be suppressed, but never be completely eradicated. So, bearing this in mind, thank you, sir, for these detailed arrangements. Thanks to my colleagues, Team Grade 6, who organized this meet and their willingness to take on the completion of given task. Finally, it is important that I acknowledge the unconditional support given to us by you, our parents. Where we are as a school today, is a combination of your effort and endeavors. Our continued partnership will ensure that your students continue to learn, progress, and reach their potential holistically. Thanks very much for your presence. Once again, I thank one and all present here. Coming together is a beginning. Keeping together is progress. Working together is success. Henry Ford. Thank you, parents. All right. Thank you, Mrs. Lynn. Mrs. Lady Jackson, over to you. Thank you, Mrs. Lynn. Thank you, parents, for coming out. A beautiful evening. All your questions have been answered. Hope moving forward, we will come to the final decision as so where we go in terms of reopening of schools. So have a good evening all. God bless you all. Thank you. All right. Thank you all. Thank you, teachers. Have a good evening. Mrs. Jackson, I'll talk to you tomorrow. Yes, sir. No problem. And I... Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye, Mrs. Peters and uh, Mrs. Jackson. I will call you tomorrow and we fine tune everything. All right. Yes, sir. No problem. You did a good job. Keep it up. Thank you. Have a good evening, colleagues. Bye, my colleagues. Thank you also. You did a good job, Miss Lynn. Go on, Miss. They're all gone. And of course, our hardworking behind the scene lady. Yes, and yes. Thank you very much, Miss Johnson. Always supporting us. God bless you. Thanks for the Christmas card, Miss. We need to play some more while we stay and wait until our guests go. Wow. So it has been a good evening. Sing along, people. Glory, 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 sister, in the highest.
Show us all that you're born now. Go. 